Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we're going to discuss the affair Jamal Khashoggi, and we have with us Ambassador Bandra Kumar, who's been a keen observer of West Asia and larger global affairs. It appears now that Saudi Arabia is going to make some admission that either by accident or misadventure, unintentionally, Khashoggi did die in the embassy. What do you think are the possible implications of such an admission, considering we have now the United States involved, the Defense Secretary is there, the uh, Turkey uh, seems to be closely involved, we have an investigation by the Makkah governor which has gone, who, have, which has, who has gone to uh, Turkey. So how do you see this admission or otherwise things playing out? Well, you know, the uh, important part there is, is that, you know, uh, that uh, how the various protagonists in the situation, uh, Turkey, which has played a very key role, Americans, uh, and uh, behind the scene, I think even Britain, uh, how um, they arrived at this point. The implications of this can only be understood in terms of that, you know. So we'll have to turn the clock back a little bit. The Saudis began by adamantly saying that uh, they had nothing to do with this, they had no, no knowledge of this, you know. And Khashoggi had left the Khashoggi embassy. Had left. This is their uh, version. Steadfast, they held on to that. Uh, now, it soon became apparent that uh, the Turks knew more than that. And they had the some question evidence. Was, yes, the question is how much more? And uh, the uh, Turks actually have a, had a very uncharacteristically brilliant media management in this. It seems that knew everything. And they were uh, leaking in driblets to the media. Almost every day this was happening. And the president who is generally very garrulous and very boastful kept to the background. Uncharacteristic silence. Very uncharacteristic, yes. Sir. Uh, he was talking from the heights, you know, that uh, we must get to the bottom of it and all the rest of it. But these leaks which are coming we are coming to the American media. So they were uh, uh, building up the volume there in America. It's almost open. Yes. They had wired the embassy. That's what I'm saying. And I they don't had know how it is. Audio yeah, yeah, yeah. clips. Now, Whether they had video or not, we don't know. That would be a little yeah, Now difficult. they're saying Audio that this, was uh, this Apple watch and it's all a, that. I have looked at it. Technically, uh -huh. it looks that that's a cover for the fact they had wired the embassy yes. and they had mics over there. My reading now is that's, that. that's exactly, much more yeah, That's exactly yeah. what I was saying. Yeah. I yeah. have a feeling that the Turks therefore yeah. knew. Because now I looked we, at the technical uh, yeah. issues involved yeah. and yeah. it looks like that's not probably so what So now when you look at the implications of this, you have to see how the Turks handle this. Uh, they knew right from the beginning the man was dead. They knew that he was murdered. And they knew that there was a death squad which came from, hit squad which came from Saudi Arabia. There's 15 men. Two flights. Flights. Aircrafts were there and all that, you know. And uh, all these things they knew. But you look at their performance. In a very calibrated way, they were leaking this. And they were leaking to the American press to put pressure. Now the point is, why the American thing? Because uh, Trump has a genuine connection with this uh, regime. Not Trump so much as Trump's son-in-law, Kushner. Jared Kushner. Kushner and uh, this man, I've, American press is full of reports that they even have a dedicated uh, phone line which is out of the reach of the Secret Service. Usually what happens is this sort of even uh, confidential conversations take place through a line which is recorded because of security implications, you know. But Kushner apparently has got away with this practice of talking to Mohammed bin Salman without a single American eavesdropping on the conversation. So it is Trump, Kushner, Mohammed bin Salman. This angle is going on there. Then there is one more dimension. You so know, Israel dimension? Yes, exactly. 
Kushner is a Jew. And Kushner is not only a Jew, he is a man who has, uh, is such a fundamentalist, a Zionist himself, that you know, he funded even, he spent his own money for West Bank settlements. He's, he's contributed substantial funds. Which is actually a violation of international law. International law, but you can imagine what a fundamentalist he is, you know. So you see this uh, contact between uh, Saudi Arabia and or rather the nexus that is forming uh, between Saudi Arabia and uh, Israel. That is fostered by Kushner very significantly. Hmm? So you see, this, while this is going on, and Turkey has very poor relations with, uh, they barely tolerate each other with Israel, you know, Erdogan. Erdogan uh, has a visceral dislike, and this is reciprocated by the Israelis also. And uh, again, Erdogan has contacts with Hamas. <coughs> so you see, the leaks were going to the deep state. Now, Washington Post, we all know well, America has probably, I mean, the CIA has probably even uh, taken some equity in the paper, you know, they're con uh, this thing. They're even funded by the CIA to that extent. It is connection is extremely well known. So, a lot of it was going to the Washington Post and they were going to these quarters, which in this civil court conditions in America means that Trump would come under immense pressure. And it's an election year also, election is just taking place. So Trump, otherwise you see the biggest problem for the Turks also would have been that uh, Trump would squash it because Trump is on a very different uh, project with Saudi Arabia, money involved, big money involved. So that is why he was very grumpy. He was saying, you know, putting so much money in America and all that and how can we spoil this relationship and all. ten billion dollar yes. arms deals. Yes. But then what happens is this is, uh, this uh, Trump was blowing hot and cold and it wasn't going very far. So then. Turks revealed some really damaging information about this hacking to death and cutting the body into pieces and all that. Now, you can imagine what impact this would have had on Khashoggi's mentors within the CIA. When things built up to a point, the foreign minister traveled to London, you know, Shao Solo. He went, traveled to Lon uh, London because uh, the Brits have a lot of interest on, in a lot of influence in the Gulf area. So it was very important to take the Brits on board and brief them so they leveled with the Brits also on this. In any case, about this Mohammed bin Salman, there's very poor opinion generally in the Western world. So things work to Turks' advantage. With this backing, the Turks, uh, then Erdogan came out and made that tantalizing statement that uh, it's up to the Turks to prove, uh, up to the Saudis to prove that he left the consulate alive. Now this, the uh, Saudis understood very well that this meant that the Turks knew far more than what they were prepared to divulge. Publicly say. Yes, and that they knew precisely what happened. Immediately there was a statement calling Turkey a brotherly country and all that and proposing a joint in investigation a statement from Riyadh. Turks accepted it. And last Friday, the Saudi team arrived. And at what level? Extremely high level. Makkah governor. Yes, Makkah governor was the son of King Faisal and uh, belonging to this powerful Al-Turki clan, a yeah, very powerful clan. So they sent a very senior person who is uh, uh, in a position to negotiate. So the Saudis understood that they had to negotiate with the Turks. Do you think that this negotiation also, negotiation also involves more than just Turkey-Saudi relationship? Does it also mean that bin Salman's position is in danger? It can go in uh, ways that we cannot anticipate today because this, uh, this is an, uh, this, we are entering uncharted waters here. Uh, obviously, the Turks have given the message to the uh, Saudis that uh, this is what has happened and we know it. So they are cornered, Saudis are cornered. Now the point is for Saudis, an admission that it happened like this is a great loss of face on the Arab street, number one. Number two, it, uh, uh, as I told you, the pride of the intelligence agencies, the CIA is not going to forget this. 
you know, already you can find, uh, I mean, I don't want to mention the names because, you know, these, <laughs> these are, uh, your, uh, your program also would be watched by outsiders, Americans included, so I won't say, but you can identify certain people who have been associated with the CIA, who appear as columnists and analysts and all that. They are already introduced the thought that this should not end here with an apology by the Saudis. Because after all, Khashoggi has been killed. It's the intelligence agency's agenda is going to be a hardline agenda. That uh, there, must be, there must be a price to pay for the Saudis. So this is the other angle. Then as I told you, the uh, price is not by underlings being sacrificed. Price must be higher than that. Would price that be the could be higher than that because uh, you know if you uh, so there will be a clash of interests. Trump's part, on the other hand, that's what I was going to say. The Trump's part, on the other hand, is that uh, now let's all somehow now you know somehow tape, let this allow this to taper off and let life move on. This would be Trump and Kushner's idea, and this is what Israelis would also prefer. Sacrifice some pawns, some pawns. but not touch the king, yes, as yes, it were, yes, yes. or in this case, the Let prince. The, uh, bygones be bygones. <clears throat> that sort of an approach. Uh, but the intelligence agencies, uh, I don't think, will uh, reconcile with that because their entire project towards Saudi Arabia is in a shambles with this killing. Turks are really stakeholders in a genuine change in the Saudi policies. Because Saudi Arabia on this track has become a threat to Turkish national security. And their core interests, the Kurdish uh, insurgency and so on. And they have in, uh, definitely hard information of the hand of Saudis and Emiratis in this attempt to assassinate President Erdogan in the 2016 coup. So they are interested in a genuine change. Then there is the known unknown factor that in Saudi Arabia, we look at it as an autocratic regime. But the fact is that uh, uh, a certain kind of a collegium approach uh, is adopted, like in any tribal society, when there is an existential moment. Tribal you know, elders equivalent. Elders opinionate and a consensus is formed. And probably the time taken between the CNN's uh, disclosure early morning today and uh, till now, I don't know whether the Saudi statement has come or not, this explains it. There is a, a consensus is required. Now, therefore, uh, the, the churnings within the House of Saud the royal family also is becoming a factor here. The point is, uh, Crown Prince Salman has alienated uh, substantial sections of, not substantial, I mean almost <laughs> across the board, you know, <laughs> arresting, them, them, arresting them, beating them taking up, taking money away from them, <laughs> humiliating them and all that. So, uh, and that includes being naive as well. Yes. So the point is, this is payback time for a lot of uh, influential forces which suffered humiliation in the last year, year and a half. That is one thing. Now, King Salman is himself very old, ailing, not quite in control of things. But on the other hand, the security apparatus, the powerful instruments of power, instruments of power and coercion are still in the hands of the Crown Prince of Mohammed Salman. And we know from his uh, short track record that he has explored new frontiers of violence, you know, <laughs> and, and you know. Apart from anything else, the war in Yemen. Yes, yes. Which the British and the Americans yes. have fully backed. Yes. Is, a, is itself an example yes. of brutality. So, um, uh, this part, how it turns out is very difficult to guess. Two days back, Al Arabiya, and this Avasat newspaper, the Establishment Daily, had a both uh, featured simultaneously, which is clearly the uh, a sign that it's the official uh, attitude, uh, the viewpoint uh, under the uh, pen name of the general manager of Al Arabiya, based in Dubai. Now, who is a very important figure in the 
media circuit in the Gulf as a whole. There they have threatened that uh, they have disclosed that they have lined up 30 measures the Saudis have to retaliate if the Americans did anything against their regime. And these included that number one, that they will ignore the, uh, they will not no longer accede to Trump's request to increase output of oil to make up for the shortfall of Iranian oil following the sanctions next year, next, uh, uh, that is number one. Which means they said, we will allow it to, the price to rise to 100, 200, even 400 dollars. Which means, you know, that they have threatened that uh, they will bring down the Western economies. Winter is just beginning, you know, this time. Secondly, they have said that they will trade, no longer trade in dollars. And they used, in fact, the expression that they may take something like another currency like Chinese yuan. Which, of course, would endanger the, endanger the dollar. Banking system. The Western banking system as a whole and this. They said they will pull back the investments in America, which they gave a figure, a round figure of $800 billion. They will pull back that. They said that they will give a base to the Russians and they mentioned the place, which is a clear sign that some discussions have taken place. This is going to change Saudi Arabia, it's going to change uh, the West Asian situation. Of this there is very little doubt today, isn't there? I think so, because uh, you see the loss of face I mentioned in the Arab street, already the GCC is unraveling. And GCC has become actually defunct. You know, GCC is not there. There's no regional security uh, architecture there. And obviously the Crown Prince has taken a lot of battering. And I doubt if he would be able to get away with the same kind of behavior in future. And now this would have useful fallouts. You know, now I don't want to link it, but I read in the Russian press yesterday that uh, Bolton is uh, going to Moscow on Monday to discuss Syria. Now, uh, definitely there is going to be a fallout therefore on Syria, where the end game is going on. And uh, if the Saudis pull out from there, this is one aspect. And then there is a mounting criticism in the US about the horrific things going on in Yemen. Increasingly difficult yes, to defend. Yes, and an opinion is building up even in the Congress that uh, the this power should be withdrawn from the uh, executive to uh, send arms to the uh, Saudis and Emirates in Yemen and so on. Not so, the question of arms, they're also in fact in the command control centers yes. which are directing the yes, airstrikes. Yes. In the sense, but uh, this has definitely weakened bin Salman, his policies and Saudi Arabia in the, at least in the global mix. I think it will put him, let me let's say, it will put him on the defensive and uh, now the attention will turn to the succession. And I think his focus now would be to retrieve the lost ground to see that he becomes the king. Ensure the inner control that he has is yes, not, yes. doesn't go away. So if uh, the Saudi consensus for projecting this sort of an acknowledgement of mistake, if the Saudi consensus involves change in the hierarchy, do not rule it out. The opponents may use this as an opportunity to defang him or remove him. Thank you, Ambassador Badra Kumar, to be with us. You, of course, have much deeper knowledge of Turkey than anybody else by virtue of being there for quite some time. And this is as much about Turkey as it's about Saudi Arabia. So Thank you, Prabir. I enjoyed the conversation. And uh, I was very sure when I was coming here that I would myself enjoy this program. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very Thank much. You. This is all the time we have in NewsClick today. Do keep watching NewsClick and visit our website and our YouTube channel.